Welcome along to the show, YouTubers. Smash the like and subscribe button as we get into the weeds of the Reds transfer plan. So let's go. The effects of playing every single game possible last season are certainly showing for Liverpool right now. The Reds have looked a shadow of their usual heavy metal selves. So far, this term, it's been a little itchy. Yeah, with many questions whether Jurgen Klopp's men have run out of steam. I am Ian Paul Joy, and I am joined by the hardest working man and potentially the best looking man on the internet, Fabrizio Romano, as we take a look back on Liverpool's summer deals and discuss the club's transfer targets and what the future holds for the current squad. Keiko Lazzo begins right now. Hey everybody, welcome along to the show. I'm Ian Joy and again, delighted to be welcomed by my good friend Fabrizio Romano. Fabrizio, thank you as always for joining us. Um, it is my pleasure to actually be in the hot seat today and get the <laughs> opportunity to talk with you. How are you doing first and foremost after that crazy transfer window? First of all, let me say thank you. It's a main pleasure for me, really, to be together, to speak about football and transfers. For me, it's always a pleasure to be here. And welcome on Kego Lazo, because being together is a super pleasure. And so I just wanted to say a big thank you. And uh, it's, it's not easy because, you know, the transfer market closes on the 1st of September. But we have many things happening also during these weeks, like about the managers, about the strategy for January, about the contracts. So there are many, many things happening always. And so it was a bit relaxing the first week, but now we are back in action with many things happening so always a pleasure to be here and discuss together one week of rest for the great Fabrizio Romano and then back to business is this the craziest transfer period you've ever seen I mean the amount of money that has changed hands between clubs and also I think it was released today the agents pulled in something like 450 million which is about 10 percent of the market it's the craziest numbers I've ever heard but for you is it the craziest period you've ever been involved in Honestly, this, this transfer window has been really crazy on the financial point of view because we had something new. Todd Bowley at Chelsea changed the game in part of, uh, of the strategy. What he did in many things is absolutely new. Barcelona invested a lot of money with this new all-in strategy by Juan Laporta that changed uh, the, the plan of the club. We remember, we remember how they were struggling one year ago with Leo Messi and many things happened. This summer, they were back in the business with many, many new signings. So many things happened and many, many top clubs moved on top players so it was a really crazy crazy transfer window with many investments and so i'm not surprised honestly because after the covid period i was expecting this kind of window mm -hmm. but we had something new we had something really new especially with chelsea yeah, it certainly felt that way. Thanks to everybody for joining us today. My name is Ian Joy, joined by the great Fabrizio Romano. At some stage, as I finish off my studio, I'm going to put a big frame right here <laughs> with Fabrizio right on it. Just because to all of us out there who love the beautiful game, he is a god because he continues to pull off these great stories, these great news, breaking transfer stories. It's awesome to see. But Fabrizio, let's get into it because I know a lot of fans are out there wanting to find out more information about Liverpool Football Club. It's been an unusual start for the Red this campaign what do you make of the way they've started i don't necessarily want to hear fabrizio romano you know pulling the strings on your phone i want to hear also about you as the analyst and your thoughts Yes, honestly, it's something not easy to comment because I wasn't expecting this kind of performance, especially the one with Napoli, because the beginning of the season in Premier League is never easy for, for big clubs in general. We also saw what happened with Chelsea and many others. But in Champions League, the game with Napoli uh, after the summer for Napoli was not easy because they lost many important players, Fabian Ruiz, Koulibaly, Insigne, Mertens, Sospina, many important leaders and top players. Uh, and then they had this game with Liverpool and they absolutely destroyed them. Jurgen Klopp yeah. a few hours ago in press conference said it was my worst game as Liverpool manager. It was absolutely terrible. And so that game was really surprising. Uh, so I think they need to, to restart. They need to uh, restart also part of the project because it was not an easy summer for Liverpool. They signed Darwin Nunez and we're going to enter into it. So it was an important signing, a top signing. Mm -hmm. But then for the midfielder, for example, they wanted to do something big, but they were not able to find the right opportunity. So I think it was also about the strategy. But I'm 100% sure that Jurgen Klopp is always the best man to, to change the situation and Liverpool will be back at top league. Well, very sure. Yeah, you make a great point right there. And uh, if you go back to some of the comments that Jurgen Klopp made back on August 31st, he said, we were going for a midfielder, but that midfielder decided to go to another club and that can happen in football. Now, there's no doubt about it, Fabrizio, that can happen in football. But who was that midfielder that Liverpool wanted to bring into the football club? Do you have any idea? Yes, the player is Aurelien Chouameni. The player is Aurelien Chouameni because 
uh, Liverpool were absolutely uh, in love with this player, Jurgen Klopp especially. Uh, the club, but especially Jurgen Klopp, he had many calls, direct calls with the player. He tried to change his mind because uh, the, the dream for Elian Chouamini has always been to be a Real Madrid player since he was a kid. And so Paris Saint-Germain and Liverpool tried to change his mind to offer an important contract. Liverpool, of course, offering Premier League football is always something attractive to top, to top players. But it was not the case for, for Chouamini. He decided to join Real Madrid. He wanted to, to fulfill his dream. And this is why at the end he joined Real Madrid. But the player they wanted was Chouamini. It's true that they also had Jude Bellingham in the list, but it was not even a negotiation because for Borussia Dortmund, he was absolutely untouchable this summer. So it was not even a topic with Dortmund. But Chouamini was on the market. Liverpool tried and tried for many weeks, but at the end it was Real Madrid. So Chouamini was the player they wanted. But at the same time, I'm 100% sure that next summer, summer 2023, Liverpool will be back on the market for a top midfielder. Do you think Bellingham could be that guy that Klopp goes for, obviously playing at his former club, Jude Bellingham being English? Obviously, the price tag could be very, very high indeed with him being an English midfielder and such a youngster. Do you think that potentially after watching Haaland leave the football club that we could see Bellingham, who right now is incredibly frustrated with what's happening at Dortmund with the inconsistency and in results? Do you think that move will happen at some point for Bellingham? I think there are good chances to see Bellingham leaving Borussia Dortmund next summer. Uh, it's never going to be easy because we know how tough it is to negotiate with Borussia Dortmund. We saw it with Sancho and with Haaland till they had uh, the release clause, but it was tough two years ago. And so it's never so easy to negotiate with Dortmund. But at the same time, I'm sure that next summer there will be an incredible race. I was speaking to some of my sources a few weeks ago and they told me, get ready because it will be the same as happened with Haaland, will be the same with, with Jude Bellingham. So with Haaland, we had Bayern involved, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Liverpool, Manchester City, Man any clubs trying to approach Erling Haaland, his father, his agents. And I think it's going to be exactly the same with Bellingham. So Liverpool will be there, but there will be also other important clubs around Europe, from Spain, from England, maybe from Germany. Let's see what Bayern will decide to do. So it's going to be a really crazy race. Uh, it will be up to the player. At the moment, he's really professional, super professional. He wants to do his best for Borussia Dortmund. But I'm sure the next summer will be one of the main topics for, for us to discuss here. <laughs> Oh, once again, thanks to everybody out there for joining us live here on YouTube. Ian Joy with the great Fabrizio Romano. If you've got a comment, please leave it in there. If we find a good one, we'll throw it to Fabrizio for you. Let's talk about that midfield. You touched upon it. They did manage to bring a player into the club in Artur. Is he the right fit for Liverpool Football Club, uh, especially over the next 12 months? Honestly, my honest opinion is I was really surprised when they decided yeah. to sign Artur. Uh, first of all, because he was out of the project at Juventus. Uh, his two seasons at Juventus have been uh, really difficult. Many injuries, many problems, not the right feeling with the manager. So it was really complicated. But I think it's a good opportunity for Liverpool because they were looking for an opportunity. So I saw many rumours in the final days about Liverpool and Frankie de Jong, Jude Bellingham, that kind of names. But the answer I received from my Liverpool sources was we are not going to spend 80 million euros, 90 million euros for a midfielder in the final hours of the market. It's impossible to go for that mm -hmm. kind of player. We want an opportunity, a player on loan or maybe a free agent, uh, a player they appreciated, for example, was Konrad Leimer out of contract next summer with Red Bull Leipzig. But we know how difficult it is to negotiate with German clubs on deadline day or the day before the deadline day is always super difficult. So it was not even a topic for Leipzig to let him go a few hours before the end of the window. And so they decided to go for an opportunity. Uh, and I think Arthur is a quality player. He needs to have some confidence. He needs to feel important for the manager. And with Allegri, it was not like this at Juventus. So I think Jurgen Klopp could be the right man to, to change his career and to revive his career because at Barcelona, the player has always been very good at Gremio, I still remember that all the top directors around Europe were in love with uh, Arthur when he was the best player in Copa Libertadores with Gremio. So he needs some time, I think. He needs some time to be 100% fit. He needs some time to, to be adapted to the ideas of Jurgen Klopp. But I think it's a good opportunity. I don't think he could be the player for the future. The, the top midfielder they want is going to be part of the plan for next summer. Arthur is an opportunity and a good opportunity, I think. Yeah, I think it's also one that they're hoping it works in the short term for Liverpool Football Club. And as you mentioned, you know, if you think of the money that's changed hands for our tour previously, 70 plus million, it's big money. So there is obviously that yes. potential there. Let's hope he fulfills that potential at some point. And hopefully the Reds fans will get to see the best of him at Anfield. Let's talk about some of the players who are coming to the last year of their contract at Liverpool Football Club. Is there any negotiations going on with players who are about to run out of contract looking to extend? We know obviously there's, there's news with um, uh, what's happening in their midfield trying to extend some uh, contracts as well. 
Yes, mm, the situation of, of Nabiketa, I think, is the most important one. They need to clarify what they want to do with Nabiketa because it's true that he was not super happy uh, this summer. He wanted to feel uh, important. He, he was not feeling to be a kind of, kind of key player for, uh, for Liverpool and for Jurgen Klopp. So the situation was not super easy. Now he's injured, but we have to say how the season will continue for, for Nabiketa. So at the moment, there is a negotiation because they, they had some contacts with the agents of Nabiketa, but it's not mm-hmm. something close to being completed. It was just an approach. It was just some, some discussion but not something close to being completed. So I'm really curious to see how it will continue, how it will progress between Keita and Liverpool. Uh, and also with Oxlade Chamberlain, it's something that they need to discuss directly with the player to decide what they want to do. Uh, for example, with Minamino this summer, they decided to let him go to, to get some money from Monaco and to change the strategy. So uh, I think in the midfield, next summer, Liverpool will need to, to refresh something. They really need to refresh. They need to sign an important player. They have many important players that are always injured. And so they need to clarify what they want to do also for the backup option in the midfield. So for Keita, the situation is still open. It's still not decided. So it will take some time. And also the player uh, to sign a new deal, he wants to make sure that he's an important player in the rotations for, for Jurgen Klopp. So I think it will take some time. You enjoy with my man Fabrizio Romano right here as we discuss the Reds. Let's move on to Napoli. You mentioned them a moment ago. They caught you by surprise. Obviously, a ton of players had left the football club. They got this incredible result on match day one against Liverpool in the Champions League. Are you surprised by how well they've started in both competitions, not only the Champions League, but also domestically sitting at the top of the table? Honestly, yes. Honestly, yes, because as I mentioned before, um, I still remember the comments uh, here in Italy from Napoli fans in July. They were really disappointed with Napoli selling Kalidou Koulibaly to Chelsea and then Fabian Ruiz to Paris Saint-Germain. Dries Mertens is a symbol of the team. Lorenzo Insigne, the captain, joining Toronto. So many things changed at Napoli. Also the goalkeeper, Ospina, was a very good one. Many, many players left the club and so they were really disappointed. Like the message was, OK, Napoli are changing everything. Maybe it will take two, three, four years to see Napoli at top level again. And at the end, their market was perfect uh, because they signed important players, maybe not so known. This Kvitsa Kvaraskelia, this Georgian guy, is something incredible. He's having an incredible impact, not just in Champions League in the game with Liverpool, but every single game he had in Serie A till now has been fantastic. This guy reminds of the first Ricardo Kaká. So we are really surprised here in Italy. Uh, and also what they did with Kim, the centre-back they signed from Fenerbahce to replace Koulibaly, he's doing great. So the strategy was absolutely perfect. So I'm curious to see uh, also the, the new strikers, how long it will take for them to be part of this project like Raspadori sign, uh, scored during the, the weekend. They also signed Joe Simeone and he scored with Liverpool. So the feeling is great around Napoli and I think they have very good chances to, to go through in Champions League after beating Liverpool at the first game at Maradona. So it's not an easy group and I think it's not going to be an easy job for Liverpool also in their Tankane and Toddfield because Napoli are prepared to fight on every single game and congrats to them because it was really unexpected. Yeah, it's unexpected, especially when you're spending such a, a small price tag on such a talented player as Kvaracelia. I mean, 10 the million guys, euros, huh? it, It's incredible, Fab. I mean, how do, they, how do they potentially get a player like that? I mean, you're talking about 10 million euros. Is this the scouting system? Is this a player that's handed to them by an agent? Is it the, the scouting video? I mean, how do they get a player like that? How do you find a player like that? No, they did an incredible job. I know the whole story because uh, I still remember it was during the first lockdown in 2020, in the most difficult period for, for football in general, not just football, of course, but for the, for the football world, it was a really tough one. And the director of Napoli, is called Cristiano Giuntoli, was using some wise scout stuff to watch players around Europe to update his database together with the scouting group they have. And Paraskelia was there and they were really surprised with this guy. So the following uh, summer, they tried to sign him and the request from Rubin Kazan was around 30 million euros, so it was really complicated. Also, Tottenham were interested in, Kava, in uh, Kvaraskelia, but 30 million euros was a lot of money for this guy who was coming from uh, clubs that were not proven as Serie A clubs or Premier League clubs, so they wanted to be careful. And then what happened? That because of the war, that changed completely the situation with Rubin Kazan, and then the player moved to Dinamo Batuni, really small clubs, the situation financially changed in the last six months, and so they had the opportunity to sign him just for 10 million euros, and they decided to invest that money. But as the director of Napoli says, uh, our real challenge was to replace Insigne with Paraskelia. It's not just about signing Paraskelia and trusting mm-hmm. him for the future. It's we wanted to replace Insigne with a symbol of the team, uh, the captain, the player we had as face of the project for many years with this guy, Vishas Paraskelia. Many fans said, who is this guy? Uh, we don't know if he's going to be good enough to play at Maradona in Serie A with a lot of pressure. And the impact has been simply incredible. So I think his value... As of today, it's already around 40, 50 million euros, and it can rise to 60, 70 in the next month if it will continue like this. 
Good, good bit of business. I mean, you think you spend 10 million on a player like that, he has an immediate impact. Everyone around the world is talking about him. Yes. We're still calling him the little Georgian because we're struggling to pronounce his name. Um, <laughs> but, it, but it is tough though, Fab, to, to keep a hold of a player like this because there's no doubt that when people recognize that Napoli only spent 10 million, they're going to profit no matter what the price tag is at the end of the day. So how difficult will it be for Napoli, do you think, to be able to hold on to him for the long term over a year or two? If he continues like this, it's not going to be easy, honestly. It's not going to be easy because I think he's perfect player for every top club around the world, for Premier League, for La Liga. Then, uh, on some page, we have to say that he's, he's still the beginning, no? So, we saw like six, seven games. So, let's see if he will continue like this, if he will be consistent. But I think Varashkelia and Leao are the two best players in Serie A right now. And what Varashkelia is doing is, is really something special. So, it's not going to be easy, but it's not going to, have to, to happen in January because Napoli will keep him for sure this season. Let's see what happens next summer. But as of now, they're really relaxed. They're super happy with him. And he's also a very good professional. So he's not thinking mm -hmm. about uh, already maybe, I don't know, new contracts or top clubs already jumping on it. He's really happy there. Napoli fans love him. So the feeling with the city, with the manager, with the teammates, with Italy in general is amazing. And so I think this was really the perfect signing for Napoli. And it shows how sometimes you don't need to spend maybe 100 million euros on a player Player to replace a top player who is leaving the club but sometimes it's about being creative being smart and trust your scouting system yeah sometimes you just need to use the Y scout to find yes. the right <laughs> talent and uh, great stuff as always Fabrizio Romano Ian Joy and Fabrizio Romano with you today breaking down all of the latest news and transfer information uh, let's take a quick break but when we return we'll get stuck into some of the Chelsea news I know all you Blues fans out there are waiting to hear some information and maybe we'll hear a little bit about Arsenal UEFA Champions League. Nine months of heart stopping, hold your breath, acceleration. While Mbappe shines in the city of lights, Benzema's racking up the hat tricks, and the Reds want Mo Magic in Liverpool. This ain't amateur hour. This is the best of the best of the best. This is the UEFA Champions League. Stream every match live on Paramount Plus. Oh, welcome back in, everybody. Enjoying the great, the legendary Fabrizio Romano with us today. Uh, Fab, thank you so much, as always, for your time. You're absolutely terrific. You always give us the information that we're desperately needing. Um, but let's get stuck into what happened uh, this morning. Wolves uh, officially made an announcement that Diego Costa is there. You mentioned it three days ago. Um, I mean, this was kind of interesting to see the news coming out from Wolves today. It was a great little promo. But how complicated was this move in getting the deal done for Diego Costa? It was about the work permit because we saw this work permit issue already created some problems to other clubs. For example, Justin Kleibert was a new Fulham player and the deal collapsed because of the work permit and then he joined Valencia on loan from Roma. So it's never easy to get the work permit. But at the end, with the appeal, they were able to get it approved. And so uh, on Friday, everything was completed between uh, Wolves and Diego Costa also with the medical test. They wanted to make sure that Diego was in good conditions as he was not playing professional football since one year with Atletico Mineiro. Uh, but he had this dream to return to Premier League to prove himself with Premier League again and uh, and it was successful so the medical tests were perfect the contract is ne till next June so one year deal and um, Diego I'm told that he's really he's really looking forward for this opportunity because he was dreaming of a Premier League return after his fantastic times at Chelsea winning the league with Antonio Conte as manager so a very good opportunity for him and of course not an easy situation for Wolves because they signed him because of the Kalajic injury uh, a really important player they signed him for 18 million euros during the summer plus the dons from Stuttgart and he had this ACL injury, uh, really unlucky guy, but he will be back in the next month. And so we wish him all the best. But Diego Costa is a very good uh, short term replacement. He can bring also some leadership to the dressing room. He's not just a very good striker, but also a main leader. Uh, and I think he's a really interesting signing for, uh, for Wolves. You know, every time I'm following you, Fabrizio, I always tend to see the comments that get thrown at you. People <laughs> just, they don't even throw sentences, they just say one word. And more often than not, I see Chelsea. Chelsea news. Give me Chelsea news. People are desperate for news from North London. There's no doubt about it. So let's give the Chelsea fans some news. But let's talk first and foremost about Thomas Tuchel departure and Graham Potter coming in. Um, Chelsea fans seem to be unhappy about that move. Do you get that feeling that they were unhappy that Tuchel, you know, was fired from the club so quickly? I, honestly, I see on social media Chelsea fans divided, like 50-50, honestly, from what I see. Uh, many of them wanted Thomas Tuchel to stay, to continue the project, to be the, the main man of the project at Chelsea. But many others wanted to try something fresh and to have the manager of the new owner. Because it's never easy to work uh, with a manager who is not your manager. Like in this case, yeah. Thomas Tuchel was appointed by Roman Abramovich, Marina Granovskaya, and then everything changed at Chelsea. The board, the director, the owner, the president, everything has changed. And so probably thought 
Bolly wanted something different. For example, uh, I'm told that when they had negotiations, Chelsea and Mark Cucurella, so there were negotiations at the beginning of August to sign Mark Cucurella from, from Brighton, uh, mm -hmm. Todd Bolly was already well informed on Graham Potter. He knew everything. So he was discussing with the agents of Cucurella and he knew everything about Graham Potter. He asked them some opinions about Potter. He asked to the player when it was done deal for Cucurella to join Chelsea, how is Graham Potter? Is he a manager at the level of Chelsea? So he was already planning for Potter to become the new the new manager uh, in the future. Uh, maybe it was short because the game with Dinamo Zagreb was really terrible and this is why Todd Bowley decided to fire Thomas Tuchel. But I think mm -hmm. um, between Chelsea fans, it's like 50-50 kind of feeling. But I think Graham Potter is a very good manager. So uh, now it's going to be it's going to be a new year. Yeah, it's a new era. It's a new man. It's a big opportunity for Graham Potter. And I know that you say that they had their man, but was there anybody else on the shortlist that potentially Chelsea would have spoken to outside of Graham Potter to potentially take over the role? Yes, they had many options because many agents, of course, right after the sacking of Thomas Tuchel, they decided to offer managers to Chelsea. So many of them were offered to Chelsea more than Chelsea approaching them because, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. Todd Bowley always wanted Potter as the manager for uh, for Chelsea. And this is why they paid an important close to, to Brighton, more than £13 million for, uh, for Graham Potter. So it's a really big investment on the manager. They had the opportunity to appoint Mauricio Pochettino. Mauricio Pochettino was the other candidate, the other plan they had in the list. They had some conversations with intermediaries and agents close to Mauricio Pochettino but at the end the decision uh, on, on Todd Bowley's side on Chelsea's side was to go for Potter the priority was Potter they wanted to build something long term this is why they offered him a five-year deal they want him to be involved in the transfer decisions they want him to be involved in the new sport director decisions and so there will be many of these steps for Chelsea uh, with uh, Graham Potter as new manager and it's going to be something not just for the present but especially for the future so I'm sure that Todd Bowley will uh, back the manager for many many years. Oh, it's a great point. And it's also an English coach getting the opportunity to, to coach uh, an English team and, and at the highest level. And his first game in charge will be a Champions League game. So that'll be interesting to see how he handles that situation. You know, the deadline day, Fab, for you is a blur. I mean, you work so hard around transfer deadline day. I watch you and I admire you. I think everybody around the world thinks you're absolutely crazy doing what you do. But we love and respect you. And for Chelsea fans out there, this was a bit of a blur as well because of what what happened obviously with the coach and, and some transfers coming and going, so many names being mentioned, but there was a couple of names that maybe Chelsea missed out on. Josko Guardiola's name came up recently. Um, what happened with that one? Yes, this was something serious because Chelsea on the final week of the transfer window, the final week of August, decided to do something for the future. So to bid for Josko Guardiola this summer, to sign him this summer, but to have the player next summer. So starting from July 2023, because they know that on this player, there were many clubs interested during the summer, not just Chelsea, but also, for example, Man City and also Tottenham. So they wanted to prepare this move for next summer by signing Josko Guardiola now and then letting mm -hmm. him stay at Leipzig for one season on loan. There was a negotiation. They offered around 80, 85 million euros plus a don. So it was a really important proposal for a player who was going to stay on loan at Leipzig for one more season. So something that was showing the ambition of Chelsea to have this player and to rebuild the defence next uh, next summer after Koulibaly and uh, Fofana this, uh, this summer. Uh, mm -hmm. Leipzig were negotiating with Chelsea, but at the end, no agreement. They wanted to extend the contract of Guardiola and then to discuss his future again in the next months. And so Guardiola signed a new deal with Leipzig till 2027. But I'm sure that Chelsea will be there again. Man City have always been tracking him. Let's see what Tottenham will decide to do next summer. So there will be many clubs on your, your Guardiola, who is absolutely one of the best young, talented centre-backs around Europe. Yeah, I agree with you. And that's a large price tag, certainly a large offer to be thrown their way for them to not get the deal done. There is a lot of money transferring hands. Todd Bowley obviously coming in with his new ownership group. And we're going to see more and more of this. So much money transferring hands this past transfer window. It's great for us. It's great. Great talking points for us. It's great for you, Fab, as well, because you're on top of it all. But it's also sometimes about the players who are at the club. And uh, it looks like Conte is in negotiations to extend his contract. But at the moment, it's kind of stalled. What's happening there? It's not an easy one, uh, but I'm told since long time it's not an easy one. Since three, four months that they are having some approaches, some discussions with the agents of Kante, but there is no agreement on the length of the contract. And now there is a new manager. Now there is a new manager because Thomas Tuchel was happy with Golo Kante to stay at, at Chelsea, but now with Potter, they need to discuss internally again together with Todd Bowley and with the new director who will come at Chelsea very soon. And then at the point to decide on, on Kante. Uh, he's a fantastic player. He's a really important player also into the dressing room, but they need to clarify what they want to do 
do with the length of the contract because I don't I don't see Chelsea or offering Kant a long term deal, no more than two years. So this is why it's not going to be uh, an easy negotiation, and this is why we have to keep an eye on Golo Kante's situation because if it will be, continue like this, there is a serious chance for him to leave Chelsea next summer as free agent with many clubs interested around Europe. As of mm-hmm. now, still nothing advanced as Kante always gave his priority to to Chelsea. He was waiting to extend his contract with Chelsea uh, right after the Champions League final they won. Uh, he was still hoping to extend the contract. Then many things happened around Chelsea. But as of now, the situation is really is really quiet. It's not close to being completed, this contract extension. So it's a dangerous situation. And let's see how it will continue. But as of now, it's really a not easy one. Certainly doesn't feel like there's going to be a lack of uh, money available for N'Golo Kante to extend his contract and do what he wants to do. Enjoy with Fabrizio Romano with you right now. Before we leave, Fabrizio, I've got to get your thoughts on Arsenal. Um, Obviously, an interesting media break this week. It was a a terrific performance from Shakhtar's sensation. I mean, we have to call him a sensation. Mikolo Mudrik, outstanding performance. I mean, it's just outstanding. He just stood out to me. Um, He got two assists and a goal against Leipzig in uh, opening game on match day one um, but then started to talk about Arsenal Football Club I mean there's a lot of noise about this kid right now could he potentially end up at the Premier League at Arsenal I think in the future there is a there is a chance for Arsenal but not only Arsenal they had a very big chance this summer because what happened uh it was around the second week of August when they had some conversation with the agents of Modric. Uh, they had some direct conversations with the agents. But then when they knew about the price tag that was way more than 30 million euros, they decided not to bid. So there was not a negotiation between Arsenal and Shakhtar, but just a direct contact between the agents of Modric and Arsenal. There are many clubs in the race because, for example, Brentford, they are always very smart. They were first in trying to sign this player. It was more than one year ago. So they've always been tracking uh, Modric. But there are also other clubs around Europe. Juventus, for example, had Mudrik in the list in June before signing Angel Di Maria. So there are many clubs who are tracking this guy. And now, as you mentioned, his performances in Champions League are simply incredible. The first one with Leipzig was fantastic, but I'm sure he will continue like this. Uh, When I was speaking to my sources during the summer about Mudrik to understand what's going to happen with clubs around Europe, they told me from Shakhtar, they really think that this guy is worth way more than 30 million euros because at one point you can say, okay, Shakhtar is a difficult situation around the club, maybe 30 million euros is big money for this guy, so they're going to sell Mudrik. They say, no way. They received the proposal on the final week of the transfer window, 30 million euros plus a dons from Everton, and they decided to say no. After Anthony to May United for 100 million euros, they said mm-hmm. for us, Mudrik uh, can't be sold for 30 or 35 or 40. We want way more than this. And so this is why at the end they decided to keep the player because they are convinced they are going to sell him for crazy, crazy money because he's considered a really top, top talent. So Arsenal have a chance for the future. Yes, but there will be many other clubs in the race now. So it's not going to be an easy one. Fabrizio, when CBS offered me the opportunity to have my own show and to have my own platform, you were one of the voices I wanted to make sure I kept around <laughs> regularly. I'm going to have you on as much as I possibly can because I love talking to you. Fabrizio Romano, thank you so much for everything you do for the footballing world. You are an absolute god. We love you. We appreciate you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure, really. Thanks again for your words. I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun, a lot of news, as always. That is important. And uh, thank you. And, and it's a pleasure for me to be here with you and thanks to all the guys for sending the questions as always thank you all right that's it from us thank you so much for listening to k golazzo please take a minute to leave us a rating and a review on your favorite podcast platform we are available on apple Podcasts, spotify stitcher and anywhere else that you listen to your podcast my name is ian joy that's the great for beats romano we'll see you next time